Okay, what I'd like to talk about now is the effects of head forward posture, particularly at the computer workstation. Uh, people are not aware of this, but the stress that's put on the neck as well as the shoulders and even goes into the arms is head forward posture. Now over here we have a mock computer workstation. Um, and if you look at the screen, it's obviously it's too low. What that can do is have a tendency for someone to bring their head forward and put stress on their neck and shoulders. Hands here. Now if you look at my head, the average head weighs about 10 pounds and you look right below it, gravity is pulling my head straight down. There's nothing there to support the weight of my head. So the neck and the neck muscles as well as the spine are all working overtime right now to support the weight of my head. Now this is all normal range of motion, however if you sit here for greater than 15, 20 minutes, so on, and uh, these greater lengths of time, the stress can really build up and damage some structures. For one thing, it fatigues the muscles, and when the muscles get fatigued, we have pain. Pain in the neck and the shoulders, the upper trap muscles become uh, stressed and uh, painful, as well as if you look at... Okay, head forward posture, particularly at the computer workstation, and here we have Rachel, she's going to help us with this demonstration to clearly uh, demonstrate how head forward posture can really stress the neck and shoulder area. And if we look at Rachel right now, she's sitting here at the computer workstation, she has good posture, strong back posture, head up above the shoulders as it should be. However, with time, as the day goes on, she may fatigue, she may start looking at the screen closer and slouch, and at C spine shape comes in, putting stress on the spine, and then if you look at her neck, look at this head forward posture, and you can just see the weight of her head is going straight down, and all these muscles right in through here are working overtime to keep her head focused on the screen. Okay, and again, remember I talked about the stress on the spine itself and the disc within the, the spine and the neck. Okay, now, why don't you straighten up again, we're going to Get rid of the screen and the keyboard, and I'm going to show you exactly how much stress you're putting through your neck so that you can remember this, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, here we have a model. We talked about head forward posture, and the weight of your head is approximately 10 pounds, and we have this bowling ball, which is approximately 10 pounds as well. This is going to be a model of the head, okay? Now, underneath the head, we have our spine holding our head up and the stick on the bottom of this bowling ball is going to represent the spine. Okay, and Rachel volunteered graciously with this uh, little demonstration and uh, her wrist muscles right now are literally holding the bowling ball up. Okay, now when we're in good posture and we have our head over the top of our shoulders, our neck muscles can hold our head up relatively easy. No, that's not too hard to hold that ball up there like that, is no. it? Okay, now, we talked about with the computer screen here, we get that head forward posture. The head leans towards the screen. Now, I'm going to move the screen out of the way. But as the head goes forward like this, okay, you got that, Rachel? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going to hold that steady. We're just going to move this out of the way. Okay, very good. Now we got head forward posture. Now, is that a little harder? on your muscles to hold it right there like that? It's a lot harder. It's a lot harder, yes it is. I want you to hold it like that and I'm going to talk to these people about what's going on in the neck, okay? So the muscles, particularly the scaly muscles on the side of your neck, when your head goes forward they contract to maintain and stabilize the head. Now the thing about these scaly muscles is the artery and the vein that feeds your arm literally go right through the scalene muscle over the first rib and under the clavicle, it's right in this area, and when your head is forward and these muscles are working hard, they literally squeeze the artery and the vein, limiting circulation to and from the arm, which can increase the risk for symptoms like carpal tunnel, as well as medial and lateral epicondylitis, as well as the spine itself. We talked about the spine getting very stressed and having pot or potential for herniated disc. 
When that happens, we can have neural problems radiating pain and symptoms uh, much further than neck and shoulders. How are you doing, Rachel? Getting tired. Getting tired? Mm -hmm. Well, you are strong, right. holding that up. Now, we've been holding this for about a minute. Okay, now if you think of head forward posture while you're at a work, work screen, or a computer workstation, or if you're driving, your head is forward, or if you're watching TV and your head is forward, we do this quite a bit throughout the day, we may not think of it. But that can go on for minutes and hours at a time, and our neck muscles and our spines really are working hard, and then we can start to develop pain, pain and stress. Are you starting to feel any of that? Yes. Okay, can you hold that for much longer? Because I'll keep no. talking. Like You're moving that. your hand. That's cheating. That's cheating. You're going to get your hand back down there, okay? Okay. All right. Very good. And as we do this, we want to think about getting our head from this forward posture and bringing it back like this. Okay, so while you're working in that computer workstation, you're going to change your posture and bring your head up like this, which is going to bring the head back like this. And hold that. Is that easier? Yes. But a lot of times what happens is we forget and the head goes forward again and we continue to stress that over and over again. So we want to continue to monitor our posture. Can you get the head back up? There you go. Okay. Very good.